In this tutorial series, you'll be designing your own print-ready trifold brochure just like this one. Let's start by opening InDesign and creating a new blank document by choosing File, New Document. In this dialog box, let's start by clicking on the Print tab and choosing the letter preset. Let's switch our units to inches and switch the orientation from portrait to landscape. Choose two pages to get our front and back, then turn off facing pages. Our document has a front and a back, but not pages that'll face one another like a book. To get a live view of the document we're creating, you can check the preview button at the bottom of the dialog box. Now, let's establish a three column layout and tighten the gutter between the columns to 0 0.16 inches. Next, we'll set our margins to the same 0 0.16 inches all around. As long as this link icon is selected, all four values will update together to match. Now we'll expand the bleed and slug and set our bleeds to 0 0.125 inches giving us a margin to allow our artwork to print up to and beyond the edge of the printed page and avoid having white space around the edges. Typically, the appropriate value here would come from your printer. It looks like we're all set, so let's click Create and have a look. We're good to go. Before we move on, let's save our document from File, Save, and let's keep it simple and call it Brochure. Now we're ready to start designing. Let's start designing by bringing some images into our document. To keep things precise, let's head up to View and choose Show Rulers. We'll want our images to be lined up, so let's mouse over the horizontal ruler and click and drag a horizontal guide down to three and a quarter inches. Keep an eye on the control bar to see the exact Y position of the guide as you drag. You can also hold the Shift key to snap to the nearest eighth of an inch. To be sure that our design elements will snap to our guides, let's head up to View, Grids and Guides, and double check that Snap to Guides is checked. Now we can grab the Rectangle Frame tool and drag five frames just like this to establish our layout. Let's also be sure to go all the way out to the bleed margin. Take your time to be sure your edges snap together and align. Now we're ready to start placing some images. To do so, we'll head up to File and choose Place. Select the Chair 1 image and choose Open. Now our cursor is loaded with the image and we can click on a frame to place it. Depending on the size of the image, it may not fit and fill the frame the way we want it to. To fix this, we can click Object on the menu bar, then Fitting, followed by Fill Frame Proportionally. Let's repeat these steps for another image. File, Place, choose Chair 2, click to Place, then Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. You'll also notice the Content Grabber donut that appears when mousing over an image. This can be clicked to select the image within the frame and access the handles to scale it. Just be sure to hold the Shift key to constrain proportions as you drag. The Content Grabber donut can also be dragged to reposition the image. Looking great so far. We just need to fill these other frames with some color. Let's start by selecting the top right frame, clicking the Fill Color on the control bar, and choosing Black. Let's click a blank area of the canvas to deselect this box. Now to get a splash of color in here, Let's select the eyedropper tool on the toolbar. Then we'll hold the Alt or Option key and click on the green color of this chair to load the eyedropper. Then we can click each of the two remaining frames to apply the color at once. Now let's scroll down to page two. We've got a few more images to add, so we'll head back to the rectangular frame tool on the toolbar and draw a box to fill the width of our first column toward the bottom. Now, to get two more frames of exactly the same size, 
hold the Alt or Option key, and drag to duplicate. Let's do this one more time. To add the images, we'll head back to File, Place. And here we can actually hold Shift to select all three images at once, and click to place them into each of our frames. Let's once again fix the fitting issue here by holding Shift to select all three images, and then returning back to Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. We'll need to draw one last image frame at the top right for the schematic art. Let's again choose File, Place, select schematic.ai, open it. We don't want any of this image to be clipped off, so for this one, we'll choose Object, Fitting, Fit Content Proportionally. Fitting will keep the entire image scaled within the bounds of the frame. Let's save our document and move on to adding some text. Now it's time to add some text. Text can be typed into text frames created using the type tool found on the toolbar, or brought in from a text file using File, Place, or even just copied and pasted from a text document. With the type tool selected, let's click and drag a text frame next to our canvas. This title will say Living Well is the Best Revenge. When you're done entering text, press the Escape key to commit, then click and drag the middle of the box to position it in the corner of the top right frame. Before we lose track of our text on this black box, let's double click inside, highlight the text, and change the color to white on the control bar. While we're here, let's also double check that it's left aligned. It is. Let's create another text box and type Carson. This text will be right aligned, so we'll head up to the control bar and make that change. Then press the escape key to exit the text box and move it into place on our green frame. For the rest of our body copy, I've got the text document here that's included with your project files that we can copy and paste from. Let's select the Think Behind the Bum paragraph and press Command-C on a Mac or Control-C on a PC to copy it. Then we'll click back onto our canvas in InDesign and press Command-V on a Mac or Control-V on a PC to paste it. When pasting text with nothing selected, InDesign automatically creates a text frame containing the text content. Now we can simply position it where we want it and adjust the size of the bounding box. We'll do the same with the text for the back of the brochure in the top center column. And we'll size and position it to leave a bit of room for a logo later. To make the best use of this space, make this text two columns by heading up to Object, Text Frame Options, and choosing two columns. Let's jump down to page 2 now. Grab the Type tool if it's not already selected. Then drag a text frame across all three columns. Next, let's head back to Object, Text Frame Options, and change the number of columns to 3. And finally, we can copy and paste the body copy into the frame. Let's save our document and move on to styling our text. Now, we're ready to begin styling our text. Let's start by taking a look at fonts. As part of your Creative Cloud membership, you have access to thousands of high-quality fonts in the Typekit library. To browse and sync Typekit fonts, choose Type from the menu bar, then Add Fonts from Typekit. When Typekit launches in your web browser, you'll be able to filter by classification and properties, like sans serif, for example. We can also search for a specific font by name. In this case, let's search Acumen and select it from the list. From here, we can choose Sync Fonts, followed by Sync All to grab the entire font family. Let's do another search for a font called Kaluna. And we can just sync the regular version of this font. 
Let's head back to InDesign. For the Living Well text, let's double click into the text box and highlight the text in order to make a change. If we head up to the fonts list, you'll notice a small Typekit icon that allows us to filter down to just view the fonts we've synced from Typekit. This will make it much easier to find what we're looking for. Now let's change the font to Acumen Pro Condensed Light at a size of 12 points with 14 points of leading, which is the vertical spacing between lines. For the word Carson, let's set the font to Coluna Regular at a size of 22 points. Let's also change the color of the text to paper. For our subhead, Think Beyond the Bum, Acumen Pro Condensed, Light, at 12 points, and with 15 points of letting. For the copy below, Coluna, at a size of 9.5, and 14 points of letting. For the copy in the green square, Acumen Pro Condensed, Light, at a size of 10 points, with 15 points of letting. Down on page 2, let's set the inside spread body text to Coluna Regular, 9.5, with 14 points of letting. Let's save our document and move on to some finishing touches. Let's add a few more details to refine our design before we call it a day. Let's place the Carson logo on page 1 by choosing File, Place, and selecting CarsonLogo.ai. We'll click and drag to place it like so. Now let's get our two blocks of text aligned at the bottom. I like where the text in the green box is positioned, so I'll click and drag a guide from the ruler to the baseline of this bottom line of text. Then we can select the text box to the left and click and drag the top handle to push the text down. There we go. Now the bottom of the two paragraphs are aligned. Before we move on to page two, let's also remove these black borders from our green boxes. Click one. Then hold Shift and click the other so we can do both at the same time. Then let's head up to the control bar and change the stroke color from black to none. That's better. For page two, let's add a horizontal rule by grabbing the line tool from the toolbar and clicking and dragging from margin to margin all the way across the page. To ensure that our line is perfectly straight, hold the Shift key and be sure to keep it held until after releasing the mouse button. Let's set the stroke thickness on the control bar to half a point. We have one last chair image to place, so it's back to File, Place. And this time we'll click and drag to place it at a size that nestles in with this body copy. And because we want the body copy to wrap around the image, we'll head up to the control bar and choose this icon for Wrap Around Bounding Box. We can also drag the size of the bounding box out just a little bit to give a comfortable amount of white space. The new flow of text did cause a couple of lines to be widowed from their paragraphs. I'll fix this by shortening the height of the text box slightly to reflow things. Then lastly, I'll double click into the text box and delete this extra paragraph break to get everything all lined up. Looks like we're just about done. Let's save our document and get it ready for print. Now, we're finally ready to print and share our document. Let's start by creating a PDF for print. Head up to File and choose Export. Here, we choose a name and destination. I'll stick with the defaults and click Save. In this dialog box, we can make some choices based on the intended use of the document. If you'll send the brochure design to an outside printing service, select the preset they recommend. I'll keep with the high quality print preset. You can also proof to your own office printer to assess the general layout and text formatting. 
The brochure design will likely clip to the margins unless the printer is able to print on oversized paper or prints full bleed to the edge. Click Export, and our finished PDF is now ready for the printer. You can also publish a version of this document online with just a few clicks and instantly generate a link to share with the rest of the world. That's a wrap. In a few short videos, we've created a beautiful threefold brochure that's both print and web ready. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.